Hey guys, this is the AC Service Tech, and today what I wanted to go over was filter dryer locations. All right, the filter dryer is mounted into the refrigeration cycle in order to trap water vapor and acids. All right, and also foreign material and things like that that shouldn't necessarily be in the system, but it's primarily for water vapor secondary acids. All right. So this particular one is a filter dryer that's used on a smaller system because it's a little bit smaller in capacity. They do have a fixed capacity on them, so uh, there's only so much water vapor that this will be able to hold. So it has to do with the volume of the system. So this one will be used on a larger system, say a four ton. This one's on a two ton here. The, there's a single direction on this, and that is for an air conditioning only. So it'll be pointed towards the evaporator coil on the liquid line. Uh, if it was a heat pump, it would be bi-directional, so it would have an arrow going both ways. Uh, but just so you know, um, the location where you should have the filter dryer, you should there should, really should never be a reason to put a filter dryer outside. So this filter dryer is about eight years old, and it had a leak in it. Um, there's, there's no reason f to install a steel filter dryer outside. Um, this is right around 10 years old. This one is about eight years old. All right, but this one's installed outside, and this one was located inside the building. So anytime you're replacing a system or you're doing work on a system, anytime you, you are opening up the refrigeration uh, system, you are uh, recovering all the refrigerant, and you're always going to cut the filter dryer out and put a new one in. Um, once again, they are fixed. They're not that expensive, all right? but that's going to help your uh, compressor life in reference to the acids. Remember that. Water vapor, when mixing with uh, with the oil, it creates alcohol and acids. So you don't want that to happen. So that's what your filter dryer is there for. So uh, this is installed outside. So why would somebody install a filter dryer outside? It might be ease of use. So for instance, somebody is replacing an outdoor unit, and they figure, hey, they're just going to go ahead and put that outside. I really don't believe, well, I really do believe that people just don't, understand that this is going to rot that fast. I really think it's that more so than more so than um, just a convenience. I think they just don't realize how quickly they rot. Um, but uh, but you, they should always be installed inside. I always install them right in front of the evaporator coil. Somebody could argue the point that they would put this outside uh, because maybe they're replacing a heat pump and there's an accumulator inside of a heat pump. If you look down past the, the fan shroud, and I'll show you in a little bit in this video uh, what one looks like, but that has about the same thickness as this does. This steel has a, the same thickness as the accumulator. Now, the compressor is steel too, but that's a lot thicker of metal, all right? Uh, but there, there doesn't take much more effort to put this inside. I do it every single time. I've never, ever, ever put a filter dryer outside. And there's no reason to. Um, it doesn't take that much more effort to go right into the inside and cut that uh, liquid line and and, uh, and install your filter dryer inside the building there. All right. So if you if you want your filter dryer to last long and and not rot like you see this one, this one was eight years old and it was actually installed on the island here. Um, so there's a lot of salt water, salt spray, and things like that. So it didn't last very long. All right. This one right here was installed the building and it's 10 years old. So it's not that much uh, time difference between this one and this one. So I just wanted to show you what the two look like. And uh, now uh, we'll go ahead and take a look at where this is installed at. So here's the face of the evaporator coil. You're going to have the liquid line coming out right here. And you would put your filter dryer installed right here. Or maybe you're coming up or maybe you're coming down, you're always making sure that the arrow is facing towards the TXV and towards the evaporator coil. All right, so if this is going to be in the way right in front of the evaporator coil, then go ahead and run yourself three foot of line set and then put it in there. It does not matter where this is installed at in reference to the system wa uh, working properly. It's just a matter of where this could potentially rot at. You know, I've seen these things buried in wet mulch and all kinds of stuff. It's crazy. All right, uh, so, you know, it's just a matter of putting it on the liquid line between the outdoor unit and the indoor unit, put it in a location uh, where weather's not going to get to it, all right? And um, if you were to do, say, a uh, compressor change out and 
you know, you're going to end up installing a filter dryer that's a lot larger. This one is a catch-all, all right? So it's literally that long, all right? It has a lot of capacity in it to store moisture and acids. You're going to use something like that, an acid neutralizer and, and things. So you're going to install a larger uh, filter dryer if you're doing a compressor change out, maybe some something that had a, uh, it burned out, all right? Uh, but you're going to have to clean the line set and, and all that as well um, and th do the acid neutralizer and do an um, acid test. But you always want to change out all the components when possible when you have a uh, compressor burnout. If you were to test this, you know, I know it's on the Nate test, or at least on it used to be, uh, where you have it's plus or minus 2 degree temp difference between here to here and uh, 2 PSIG uh, pressure difference between here and here. That would indicate that there's a, some type of a restriction in here. Just to stay safe, though, I might recommend three to four degrees um, across. But um, just because you don't get that doesn't mean that the filter dryer is not completely full uh, in as, as far as its capacity is concerned. All right. So, you know, it can only st store so much water vapor, and that's it. Well, anyway, we're going to go ahead and take a look at the accumulator in the uh, outdoor heat pump. All right, so if you can make that out, the tank on the right-hand side uh, is the accumulator. The accumulator has two suction lines coming out of the top. All right, and if you can see close enough, you're going to actually see that the paint is peeling because the tank is actually rotting. So that's another potential leak source on a system, on a heat pump system, uh, that you know you could have a leak at. All right, the compressor is right to your left there, and that is an oval shape, which means that that is a reciprocating compressor. If you just saw a circle uh, straight down at it, that is a scroll compressor. So there's, this is an older uh, reciprocating compressor. But anyway, I just wanted to show you where the accumulator was. The accumulator, the accumulator's job is to make sure that there's no liquid going into the vapor compressor. So it's there as just a safety uh, check, just to make sure that uh, that there is no liquid going into that vapor compressor and that would hurt that compressor. All right, but I just wanted to show you it just to, so you know uh, where it's located at because uh, you do have them rotting and leaking refrigerant over time. So that could be uh, the spot where you could fix the leak at. All right, hope you enjoyed yourself and we'll see you next time at AC Service Tech Channel.